dollars a beat. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Johnny, and welcome to JM Productions. And in today's video, I'm actually going to be finally doing a QA for you guys. Now, I actually have several pages worth of questions. I think in total there are 17. I made a promise to you guys that I would do a QA, and I'm finally getting to it. It is a beautiful day out here in St. Charles. I got both my scooters to show for display. We got the Mark 8 and the Torso EA Pro. Noah's is basically the same uh, Mark 8 scooter, so I decided to leave this in the garage. Sorry, Noah. So this comes from Vu. You guys might know him. I've talked to him several times on the channel. He is basically the go-to guy for any of these Chinese scooter um, repairs or talks. He really is a phenomenal uh, YouTuber, and it's you know always love seeing his new videos coming out. If you're watching this, Vu, hello. I got your four questions. Let's see what you have to say. Right, question number one. What about the scooter has been a disappointment and what has exceeded your expectations? So, to talk about both of them, the Mark 8, I am really impressed with the quality because when I first purchased the scooter, it was $1,100. And, you know, really around those prices, you're only getting scooters that go like maybe 20, 25 miles per hour, at least the ones that I was seeing. And what concerned me was, you know, this scooter claims to go 40 plus miles per hour, so I was really worried about the quality and maybe it wouldn't work properly, but no, it actually runs phenomenally and the stability is great. I was really worried that it wouldn't be as good as like the KK10S, but just judging from both of our uh, videos that I've watched back and forth, it seems like you and I both have the exact same stability at the higher speeds. So. All in all, it's really great. One of the biggest um, disadvantages to the scooter, though, in my opinion, is the rough acceleration on the throttle and the regenerative braking. I wish that was better, and I know you have also mentioned that you hate the regenerative braking, so let's just hope in the future they fix it and maybe we can get it replaced. I don't know. Second question from Boo. Have you ever been pulled over while riding? So not on the road, no, but on a bike lane, yes, because we have you know several bike paths here in St. Charles. Mo the most known one is the Fox River path, and I was very unaware that uh, electric scooters and stuff were allowed on weren't allowed on there. So you know, me just being who I was, I hopped on the trail with the Torsor, and you know it's not like I'm going 30 miles an hour. I'm going maybe you know, 10, 15 max, but overall, I'm just enjoying the ride. I'm about three miles in, and I have a cop on an ATV pull me over, and he says, I need to get off right then and there. And, you know, it was only a warning, no ticket, but what sucked about that was I was in Batavia, and the only road that was available to drive on was Route 25, and that was a 50-mile-per-hour road. And this is when I first got the scooter, so I really didn't have much experience going really high speeds with it. So I had to just say YOLO and go for it, and that's where I experienced my first ever speed wobble. So hence is why I'm replacing the shock, if you've seen my previous video. But just, yeah, so that's the only time I've been pulled over. I've passed so many cops, you know, even sheriff, police officers, never, not even once, even on the main roads going like 40 miles an hour. What tools or servicing equipment do you recommend facilitate and facilitate maintenance and repair of scooters? So, what I like to use, and I got them in both of these, and I should have it in here, the, really, this right here is your main tool. This is a Allen wrench set. Um, it is literally all you're going to need for your basic tune-ups. I actually made a video all about that, saying how you can just use this to tighten up all these bolts that are around, because that's the beautiful thing with these scooters, and I think all the other ones as well, like Apollo, Dualtron, is that all of them use these Allen screws, and it's really great because it's so easy to maintain. You know, you don't need to have like 50 different screwdrivers, you know, to take care of all the bolts and all that. Um, as for other things, um, I use uh, Craftsman drills to go through the lug nuts there and everything. Um, I haven't used it yet just simply because I'm waiting for the, um, the air shock to come in, the 190 millimeter that I've done, uh, mentioned in my previous video as well. 
but really those are the only big tools you're going to need. I also mentioned about a Xiaomi air tire pump that's wireless and it actually does great with the tires. Um, but yeah, overall, just this is really the main tool you want. It's really basic and it really gets the job done, actually. Alright, and your fourth and final question. What are some of the dumbest questions people have asked you about e-scooters? So, this isn't really a question, but it was more of a comment that I got on not any of my scooter videos, but my motorcycle vid. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I used to own an electric uh, Honda Grom. It did about 40 miles per hour, but it was made in China, and it was it was pretty good for the price. I had somebody, I found correct, if I have it exactly, it, somebody uh, commented and said, more CCP crap. Thanks for having the communists enslave you. That, 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 that's all I gotta say about that comment. You, you tell me how dumb that is. Alright, this next one is coming from Mel Co. Does the stem fold down? So can it fit in the back of an SUV? And how do the shocks feel on this scooter? So that was kind of just a combined question, but um, yes, both of these scooters do fold down. I, in one of my previous videos in the basic tune-ups, I actually show the scooter being folded down. Um, I actually didn't know how to at first because compared to the Torso scooter, you know, you bring this lever down, you pull this pin um, down upwards, and then it bring allows you to bring the folding mechanism down. This one doesn't have that, and I tried contacting Maki about it at first, and they were actually confused, and it wasn't until the second time I asked them, they were like, oh, you just pull this lever down, and the lever is on the inside, so it's not on the outside, so a little weird, but it works fine, and I've been able to fold it since, but I very rarely fold them, just because I don't go anywhere with them, I use them constantly for work, and going to friends' houses and all that, so not really a, a necessary thing for me. And how do the shocks feel? Um, these are amazing. These actually remind me of the Wolf Warrior. I actually got to meet somebody about 30 minutes away that owns a Wolf Warrior and has shocks like these, and it is really, really good. It does pretty good for the most part. Uh, I wish the back shocks were a little better because I feel like sometimes at least with the foot that I place in the back, it kind of, you know, like hits them a lot rougher than the one in the front. But other than that, the torso shocks are actually really good. Uh, the two in the back really support the foot, but the front one I'm not a big fan of simply because it causes speed wobbles. And with that, I'm getting that all replaced. So hopefully when I get that done, I will say that it is perfect. And I'm sure I will. All right, this is coming from Jerry C. What did the Mark 8 cost you? $1,100. And that's with tax and all, like $1,136 with tax. That's how much it was. Do you know if the footboard lights are extra? Um, no, they came with the scooter. I don't think there's any special pricing unless they've changed it since I purchased it back in uh, December, but uh, no, it didn't cost me any more. I can simply just, you know, the lights turn on right away and all that. See, just reading through it now. What specs am I looking for? So with these specs, you're getting 3,200 watts. So 1,600 watt motor in the front, 1,600 watt motor in the back. Uh, this one is a 26 amp hour battery, which is a lot for a scooter like this. Uh, Noah's is 25. I think it's just because he wanted it slightly cheaper, so it was like a hundred buck difference for that. But um, other than that. You're looking at a 26 amp hour, 3200 watt scooter, and it's got plenty of power. Like I mentioned, I've hit, you know, 40, and I've hit a max of 47 miles per hour on it. Coming from Christopher Cove, may I ask why you always start in eco mode? So this is just a little thing that I do whenever I start up the scooters. Uh, basically. The way I see it is I want to get the hang of the scooter when I first take off. So I'll put it in eco mode, take off, get myself stable and ready. Because we have a stop sign right at the street I live on. And as soon as I'm at that stop sign, I immediately put on turbo and I take off. So I technically don't need to do it. I know how to control the scooters. It's, it's just a little thing I do. It makes me feel a little more comfortable, I guess is what I want to say. All right, coming from Kanku. 
How do you open the deck? So with that Allen uh, screw set, you're actually going to remove all the screws from the deck from here. So in total on the Mark 8, we got 4, 6, 8, and 10. And the Torso only has 8 here. From, yep, it's only got 8. So, you know, you take those off and the deck should come off right away. There really shouldn't be any other things you need to do. Uh, I don't recommend opening it unless you really need to do uh, wiring or just want to look at it. Uh, you know, sometimes these uh, things on the inside can look like a bird's nest, so I just in general don't mess around with it and I'll just wait till I actually need to work on it. Alright, coming from Mike Parkinson. How long did it take for you to get the Mark 8? Um, so it took me roughly, um, this one in particular took me only uh, a week and a half. Because this was prior to COVID and they were actually had a warehouse in California uh, where they were able to send it out immediately to me. Because now, you know, their California warehouse or whatever is shut down and they're only taking uh, their scooters, uh, shipping them to you from China. So with China, it'll take roughly 30 to 35 days. But this one took me over a month and Noah's took a month and a half. His got really delayed in, due to COVID. Coming from Young Alaska, what website did you buy it from? I bought it from Alibaba.com. That's probably the most known uh, Chinese website right alongside AliExpress. Uh, Alibaba is just a Chinese manufacturer website. You're, you're basically just talking right to the manufacturers about their product. And, you know, this is like, you know, you see things like Dual Ped and Dual Tron, and really they're buying these scooters from these other manufacturers and they're just redesigning them a little bit and calling it their own. But yeah, it, I totally trust the website. I would say definitely do some research on some of the companies that you look at, but other than that, I totally trust them, especially with Maki and Torsor. They are both really good companies. Alright, my camera has died three times. Let's just pray to God it actually <laughs> will be working fine now. From Arnold Lagia, how many months have you used the scooter? Any issues with the battery? And can you leave it charged without overcharging the battery? So I've had the Mark 8 since December, so actually I've had it for quite a while now, and I've only put, uh, surprisingly, only uh, close to 300 miles on it. And as for the uh, Torso, I've had it since um, April, so I've had that not as long, but, in, but this one's got nearly 200 miles. Um, no issues with the batteries at all. I did have an issue with one of the chargers coming from the Mark 8. But that might have just been on my end. Uh, it was just one night that just for some odd reason wasn't changing to green, but ever since then it's been working fine and it's still showing the full voltage on the odometer. So to my knowledge, it's working fine now. And yes and no for leaving it overnight, because what these uh, chargers have is they have a little safety feature where after it hits 100%, it actually turns off the charger so it actually will cool down because you know they start to get really hot uh, when charging up your scooter. So. Yes and no, because technically you could, but in the long run you wouldn't because that could end up causing damage to your charger and even to the battery. So, you know, if you do it, you know, a couple times, you know, don't be, I don't know, slapping yourself in the face about it, but don't be doing it on purpose every day if you're charging it. Coming from uh, Carl Remy, where'd you get the mirrors and the bag? So, most of my products come from Amazon. I, you know, Amazon is like the go-to place for purchasing stuff. Uh, the Wild Man pouches, they're all on Amazon. These are the size of 3L, not the 2L, because I want as much space as possible for putting my tools, my masks, and whatever else I need to put in there uh, when I'm out driving. But the links will be in the description down below for those products if you're interested. Coming from Jay Way, can we get a video on what the P settings are for? I actually did it for the uh, Torso EA Pro. Uh, that is actually two, is actually one of my previous videos. Coming from the London Cyclist, have you seen the 7,000 watt 72 volt scooter? So yes I have, and it is absolutely insane. I mean, if from what I understand, it is a lot more powerful compared to these scooters. You know, sometimes they make it sound so powerful and really it's just the exact same. Because this is 5,600 watts and it's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty big. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of torque. Um, 
but yeah, I haven't personally ridden one, but if I ever get the opportunity to, I will gladly take it because it looks awesome. But it's almost two thousand twenty five hundred bucks. That's that's quite a bit. That's a couple more stimulus checks we need. Coming from Rocky Orio, uh, may I know uh, what to use this? Uh, which slime to use for the scooter? Thanks. Um, it really depends. It seems like um, Armor uh, Dillo. If I'm correct, if that's what it's called, is the most known brand uh, that's uh, recommended from the scooter groups I'm on on Facebook and from what I see at stores. But you can also use regular slime. But I have heard it can be a disaster when trying to, um, if your tire does have any pops, there's just slime everywhere. So, you know, it's a hit or miss. Slime, I think, is cheaper than Armadillo. But if you're looking for a good quality, I recommend Armor. So, just my opinion. The last question coming from C2 View. Uh, uh, do you get speed wobbles at 40 miles per hour? And how often do you push 40 miles per hour? On the Mark 8, I practically hit it every time I ride. Um, you know, it takes you know a couple seconds obviously to get to that. You know, it's not an instant 40 miles per hour like like you see like the zero motorcycles and Harley Davidson uh, live wire. But um, this one can hit 40 miles per hour uh, quicker just because of uh, the bigger torque it has, you know, 3200 watts, 5600 watts, but both of them can hit 40 miles per hour. Uh, this one has no speed wobbles, unless obviously I hit a big bump, which I very rarely have, and this one unfortunately in general causes speed wobbles, hence is why I'm replacing the uh, spring shock with a 190 millimeter. So I'll be looking forward to doing that so I can actually start riding this thing properly on some of the roads. I totally skipped a question. I am so sorry. <laughs> um, from Grandpa Toothless, um, can you ride it in the soft rain? I do not recommend this simply because um, I've done it. But if you break anything, like if you you know fry your battery, controller, motor, whatever it is, and you tell them it's from the rain, well, your warranty is completely voided. So I'm gonna say a soft no. So. Sorry I missed your question. <laughs> Alright guys, and that's going to go ahead and end today's video. I'm really glad I got to do the Q&A. Uh, gotta love the wind, don't you? But I'm glad you guys were able to see the video. I'm glad I was able to release the Q&A for you guys in general. I've been wanting to just because I put enough mileage on to where I think I can answer you guys' questions. If you guys have to have more, just leave uh, one in the comment down below. I'll try my best to answer, or maybe someone else will answer for you. It just really depends. But thanks again guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next JNM Productions video.